Hey guys, my name is James and in this video I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to create a temperature tower profile for the various different types of plastic you use for your 3D printer. Hopefully giving you insights on how to create a better print, uh, finding that perfect temperature. Now this is a beginner's video. Many of the intermediate and advanced users probably know about this technique. This video is probably not for you, but stick around to the end of the video to hear my opinions on these temperature towers. Now, there are many different types of temperature towers available. And looking through the various designs, I come to the conclusion that it is best just to keep it simple. So I decided to design a couple of my own. There are many different types of temperature towers available on Thingiverse. You can use any of those or you can use mine. I'm going to leave a link in the description below. Just remember that the steps are going to be the same. You're just going to have to find the, uh, the height and then you're going to have to find the intervals. Just divide it and then you're going to have to input the numbers based on the height and the type of modification you're making. So here we're going to take a look at the Sunloose Gold Silk Filament. And I'm using this one as an example for my profile. Even if you change the color, if you look at the results, uh, some of the attributes change. So make sure you select the correct filament before you look at the temperature. So here it says the printing temperature technical specification is from 190 to 220. If I go down, scroll down, here's actually the color. It says here, the suggested printer temperature is actually 220. So at the maximum temperature of from 190 to 220. I think more and more these days the manufacturer are actually putting a suggested temperature rather than a range of temperatures. This temperature range is going to vary by the nozzle size and different other factors that you have on your printer. This is a good starting point. I brought in my temperature tower. Now for this gold filament, it says the temperature range is from 190 to 220, but I added a, another 20 millimeter increment of 225. I think it's a good enough height range to where the bed temperature does not affect the actual temperature of the cube. Now you can raise the temperature of the extra cube at 225, or you can leave it at 220. That's up to you, however you decide to do it. If you find that the cube is actually deforming because of the higher temperature you always want to lower it down to a lower temperature so this range for the first cube is kind of like a dead cube where you're not using it to monitor any of the temperature changes again it is because it's going to be affected by the heated bed so we're going to go here to extensions post processing modify g code and then we're just gonna get rid of all these, make it simple and start from scratch. We're gonna add the change at Z 5.1.1 experimental. And we're gonna add that seven times. If you take a look right here, it's at 160 the Z height. And we know each individual cube is at 20 millimeters. It's 160 divided by 20 which is gonna give you eight minus one because we have an initial temperature that we're gonna set later on. Uh, so we need seven changes in the change at Z 5.1.1 experimental. So we have one right here. We're gonna add another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we have here at the height difference of 20, we're just going to go down the list, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, and the last change is going to be at 140. Don't exit out of this menu yet. I'm going to exit out of this menu to show you something. So the easiest way to go do this is go here to the top value. Once you have the extension post processing modify G code, it's going to actually stand out right here by the icon. See, so it says right here, change active post processing script. And you're just going to reopen that. 
And then from down here, 190 at the top, we're going to go here and change the extruder temperature to 190. Go here, change it to 195, and so forth. Just go up the list. This is going to be the easiest way for you to enter the numbers or the quickest way for you to enter the numbers. Just make sure everything is correct. Go down the list, see it's correct. And if it's correct, you should have 220. This initial bottom temperature is going to be set right here. So we're going to go to temperature. And we're going to add a 225. So this is the initial temperature. I am going to change some of the settings. We are going to go down here and add a spiralized outer contour. I'm going to click on that. You can actually do the smooth if you want. Another thing that I'm just going to change is the fan. Instead of enabling the print cooling, I'm just going to disable it. Now during the initial stage, the first cube, you really want to pay attention and see if there's any deformation. If there is, you need to activate the fan. Either activate the fan or lower the cube down to a lower height where you start at a lower temperature. If you do have to enable the print cooling like so, you don't really have to increase the fan speed by much, maybe around 10 to 20%. If you can, try to put it under 5% um, just to see how the filament or plastic reacts. This is pretty much going to vary by what type of filament it is, but for most PLA, um, you're not going to have to increase the fan speed by more than 10 to 20%. So just keep that in mind. We're just going to slice this and see how it comes out. Preview it. The inner side is hollow. It's just one layer of wall going all the way through and it looks perfect I'm just gonna save the file export it and print it out they look really nice this was printed with no fan this was printed with 20% fan you can hardly see any difference in them it was printed with one layer of wall for a reason because I'm going to be tearing them apart and it kind of saddens me that I have to tear them apart. You want to use more of a, um, instead of a needle nose plier, if you have like a uh, more broader type of uh, plier, a regular plier would be better. Um, what I'm doing is trying to figure out where the best adhesion strength is at. So at what layer height or temperature the best adhesion strength is at? I'm doing it with my fingers right now. Obviously if you use your fingernail or whatnot and dig into it, it's going to break a lot easier. So that's why you want to put like something flat if possible. And try to see where the adhesion is. See right here, there's a lot of adhesion. You know, you can feel it that the adhesion is best when the temperature is very high. It almost makes me want to cry to have to break these. But and where there's a joint, it actually breaks apart much easier. See right here around the 205 range is pretty good. It's very difficult to take apart. If you dig your fingernail into it, it's going to break apart really fast. What I'm trying to do is use the flat part of my fingers and try to pull them apart. And this is the number one thing that you need in 3D printing, good adhesion. Actually for this model, I think it's better if I make it a little bit longer. That way you can break it apart and you have enough space where you can try to um, pull it apart with your 
fingers instead of your fingernail. Now I want to break this right here. See where the joint is is very easy. Actually, it, this has good bonding right here. This is even at a higher temperature than the 205. See, right here is very tough. But again, the issue is if you make the temperature very high, then you have the issue of it stringing or maybe it's sagging. Right now, this is a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. That's why there isn't that much sagging. But if you go with a bigger nozzle, the filament is going to get much heavier and it's going to have a lot more sagging than the 0.4 millimeter. Now, what I really think about these uh, temperature towers, you know, there are so many different designs out there, so many different uh, type of features that they give on each design. I really don't find that all those features are really necessary. I think that if you really want to dive into creating the best print, you have to modify or change the settings one at a time, one issue at a time not these multiple settings at one time, where you won't be able to really d differentiate what is causing the issue for your printer or your prints. That is why I think you should really keep it simple in the design. You want to separate those tests into different individual tests rather than compiling them all together all at once, where you will have the issue of not knowing what change actually affected that model and these days um, i don't really think that the temperature tower tests may be necessary as you saw in my video the manufacturer really gives you a good temperature to use more and more these days they are giving you a specific temperature to actually use and of course because you may have made some modifications to your printer the actual temperature that you use may be a slightly different or um, if you move to a bigger nozzle, you're gonna have to change out uh, to a different temperature. Most likely it's gonna be a higher temperature. For the PLAs, you're gonna be able to go up to 240 degrees with your stock hot end, but you can't really print a lot of the exotic prints without the hardware upgrade. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. This is James, thanks, signing off. Till next time, until the next Cura Files, later. Thank you.